you mentioned the Indianapolis Colts as a team with a reputation during the Dungy Peyton Manning era of st- of sign stealing, and you even got a coach pegged named in this piece who was particularly good at it. Correct. Great at it. Yeah, legendary Howard Mudd, the longtime O line coach. So in his, I think, a dozen years or so mm-hmm. with the Colts, fewest sacks in the NFL over that that stretch. Obviously, they threw it a lot with Peyton. Peyton. But talking to, so I talked to somebody who was on the Colts then, yes. who just raved about how good Howard Mudd a fo- was at it. A former Colts player is how you referred to this individual throughout the piece. Not only was he great at it, here's the thing. Howard Mudd. Yeah, yeah. was, it was not just an urban legend that everybody knew about. So it was like, when you go into this game, we're not talking college kids where some of it's really elementary and, hey, this means the power, or this means the power. It's like they were doing stuff where it would be very subtle and different things because like, we got we to gotta be extra careful because because Howard Mudd is going to be on to us. And then it was the way to, you know, as this this person with the Colts explained it to me, it wasn't just that Howard Mudd would eventually crack the code. He would be able to communicate it back so they would have this chain of command to get to Peyton Manning to know, okay, is there pressure coming? Is it not? And Peyton was so smart and is so smart that he was able to attack, figure out what, what was going to come from there. So it was like two parts of the process. And obviously, um, you know, as this person said it, that's where the magic was. Yeah, and- I will not. I will not ask you to out your player. Obviously, you wouldn't. But if you don't mind me asking, how concerned was this player communicating this to you, Bruce Feldman? This player probably would prefer like thinking there's a sensitivity to this. Damn straight there is. You know, to this day in 2018. Yeah, and and what he said to me conveyed to me, and I think this was genuine, not just him saying, "Well, this is the reason why I want to cover my tracks," kind of thing was. Uh, that you don't want it to, to take away from any part of Peyton Manning's legacy because in a lot of ways, this, uh, this kind of underscores how brilliant he was because he was able to get that part of the information. Now, other people can go, well, you're getting the answers to the tests, but he really wasn't getting the answers to the test, but he was getting information. And it was like, okay, how are we going to manage it? And that's not to say that they're the only ones doing it, from, but from everything I had heard, they were the best doing it. So I asked my Patriot friend uh, who loves to say, if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. You fine with that? You fine with that? Because if if you're going to be able to glean this information and other teams don't protect that information, this is before the headset uh, yeah, was allowed to yeah. be put, uh, an earpiece was allowed to be put on a defensive player, which has removed a lot of this from the game. So you fine with that? It's on you to protect the information. Is that the general sense you get from industry folks who spoke to you about this? It is. Um, I think what what kind of separated these guys with the Colts is, like, colleges don't radically change signals. They're dealing with college kids. A lot of times these college kids, just they're, try, they're trying to remember where they're supposed to line up on a given play, much less all this other stuff that's happened on the fly. With the NFL, it's next level. And as you said, when the earpiece went in for the quarterback and for the Mike linebacker, that cut down on some of this stuff because in college, you guys see a lot of no huddle. They don't have the earpiece. Right. So there's a lot of, you know, and you have less with college, you have less, uh, you know, I don't want to say less intelligence, but you just have less experience, well, less savvy guys. That's right. oh, I, I mean, look, the number three overall pick in the draft, Sam Darnold, every single time he went to the line, he would, they would hurry up, they wouldn't huddle, but he would stop. After they're lined up and just stare at the sideline. Check with me. That's the thing that scares people. Stare at the sideline. I mean, and he's not the only one. No, that's most of them. That's many of them. And I think what you would see, like I had uh, an offensive coordinator who's relatively young tell me, he goes, my defensive coordinator, this is college guys, thought, he goes, I just want to know if it's run or pass. And he's like, it doesn't work that way anymore because (laughs) whether it's RPOs, we have all these. And and this coach said, you know, I call runs like 75% of the time. But it will turn into run pass, you know, 50-50 because that's what the defense is kind of reacting to. So we're going to counter punch to it. And I think when you talk about uh, the level on the NFL side, and this is a part that, you know, we didn't have room for this part in the story. Uh, I talked to a coach who they would face the Patriots quite a bit. And he said, you might get Tom Brady once. But he is going to burn you the next, you know, next time. What do you mean by get Tom Brady? Uh, The example they had was they thought they knew by the stagger of his feet in the red zone which way a handoff might go. They blew it up from what he said once. The next time was like a walk-in touchdown. 
So that bra- so you by they, that you mean this. They did understand a Brady tell once, but Brady and whoever else, Belichick or what have you, picked up on the fact that they found that tell and used it against them exactly. the next time around. And, and NFL teams, and I've heard this with, <laughs> I've heard this about wow. Sean Payton and and Drew Brees as well. These guys self scout so much, they are able to take advantage of when they think that you're on to them with something, and they will burn it, burn you with it. Whereas in college, you don't see that as much because they just, they're just scrambling to deal with with a hundred kids. And you think, you know, we sit here and say, well, how much action is in a football game, technically? Like 10, 12 actual real live minutes because right, right, right. once the play is over, the, pl- the play clock just rolls 30, 40 seconds. This is all happening within that 30, 40 seconds well, in between plays. One of the guys is telling me, and this is an NFL guy who used to be in college, and he said, you would be shocked at how much stuff you can get with off a TV copy. He goes, but when you the audio quality now is so good. Now it's not, you know, there's different games, different, you know, amount of cameras for per broadcast right when the nfl obviously but he said you could hear stuff if i'm a defensive lineman he goes these guys go home with their ipads now this is all they're doing not this is all they're doing but this is a big you know this is their 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 careers they can study cadence and the sound and pick up on stuff and he said they will know you better than you know yourself man and and i know um wow. i know college teams swap tape right and, yeah, <laughs> and that's the uh, at least that's the gentleman's agreement that you give us tape on you we we get tape from you right. And that's another layer of this because now there's been and this one particular signature said my head coach was really ticked off because you can't tell sometimes they cut out where the motions are like you just see it like okay they're gonna snap the ball well that's not right but instead they are because the people who are taught to who are, they're, they're film guys or say hey, make sure you do not cut to any stuff where they can see the signaling coming in because then you're giving away our stuff. And so it is, again, <laughs> so I, I don't want to say it's snaps. paranoid because they are, wow. like they have a reason to be paranoid because there's so many examples. That I think of this as a, as a reporter where you're just like, man, they're really cutting down on access. But you get why because little details get out and those little details can be a huge difference. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.